We're in a make it or break it season. One year left on my contract. And after missing out on the Champions League for the first time in a couple years, my future was uncertain. Let's not worry about that now because we started the La Liga campaign brilliantly. Despite Lozic being injured, the opener was a massive 4-1 victory over Valencia. Arezzo was doing well, but the real star of the show was Usama Labiad. He of course scored against Valencia and followed suit versus Athletic Bilbao, Malaga, Sevilla, and Deportivo La Coruña. Sevilla was the only blemish in a match where we wasted a bunch of chances. It is what it is. Transfers that were made to improve the squad involved the free signings of Jeffrey Kongdabia, Miguel Gutierrez as a rotation option at left fullback, Juan Soriano who started in net for us, until he damaged his spine. Pain. Carlos Alenia was brought in from relegated Getafe for just 4 million. Dardar left on a free, while two left backs were let go. Pedrosa for 5.5 million to Tigres, and Sanusi for 9.5 million to Hellas Verona. That means we needed a new left back. So I spent the most money during my spell at Espanol, and that'd be for Omar Richards from Lyon. So against Jurgen Klopp's Atletico Madrid, a team that smashed us four times last season, would these signings be enough? The only problem with Kong Dabe is just he's got injured in the two games he started this season for us. Oh, there's Kong Dabe. That was all ball ref. What bull crapper is this? Lozak finds Rooney. Let's go. Hit it for the real fans. Roo, roo, roo. Ba, 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 ba. Be careful of Aussie man, please. Oh, not Richie. 71st minute. We have a free kick. It is Alenia stepping up. Let's go! What a strike by Carlos Alenia! Doing the Naruto run! Will it cost me? Oh no, Hosek! Nico Sanchez! He scores! 3 2! Espanol! Boom! <laughs> While Real Madrid were dominating La Liga, Barcelona were having a torrid time. Nevertheless, winning 2-1 against them was brilliant, until we forgot how to mark. Oh. Still, after 14 matches, there were great results that had us in an awesome position. Coming up against Real Madrid, what a story it'd be to defeat them and be within two points of the title. Unfortunately, it didn't happen because they're just a better team. Who needs El Bobby? That triggered a domino effect of a couple poor results, like drawing nil nil with Abar and losing to Mallorca. Who I guess we can't defeat. Despite Real Madrid running away with everything, we were in fourth halfway through the campaign. Now I requested an increase to the transfer budget with the January window arriving. I've been doing a great job winning manager of the months and things like that. The wage budget increase was instantly denied. But I managed to convince Chen Yangsheng into giving the club additional cash for the existing transfer budget. I was shocked, but excited. I can't wait to see what we get. What the gift. Thank you, Chen Yangsheng. Priority number one, a great anchor. Caceres from Argentina ended up being the option, and he was, in my opinion, a significant upgrade over Arno Martinez in that role. Unlike last season, we are barely using the 4-3-3 with two DMs. Instead, let's take the older 4-4-2 that we used and create what I call a modern 4-4-2. It's the classic 4-4-2 with a few slight adjustments and BAM! We have revolutionized football. It wasn't always perfect as in the start of the second half of the campaign, a loss in the Copa del Rey to Deportivo La Coruña, drawing Athletic Bilbao in the 94th minute, and allowing Piotr Zielinski to fall out on us, resulting in a 2-1 loss to Valencia. The frustrating outcomes of these fixtures led me to do something I never attempted. Spend a transfer budget that I don't have. <laughs> I saw this Arsenal player named Alberto Molero, and it seemed like he was available for 24 million. So that was a fucking lie. I felt he was too good of a player not to bring in. And we had money after the sale of Jovic to Mainz at the sum of 13 million. Now Matias Arezzo signed a new contract last season. However, he just wasn't being the guy. Labian and Hosek were more consistent, but I never considered selling him since his value was never that high. Then on deadline day, Arsenal made an offer. I rejected it and got a knock on my door. He was confused why I didn't accept Arsenal's bid, and I just laughed because the offer was shit. He wasn't laughing. Let's just say I agreed to sell him as he wasn't worth the trouble, and you know the installment treatment we gave Arsenal? Wolfsburg did the exact same thing to us. Now, it was far too late to sign anyone else, but there were guys in the B team who were balling out in the second division of La Liga who could fill in his role. Following that, it's time to finally talk about Europa League dreaming. The draw for our group was intriguing. Initially, Sporting was the first opponent, the club we sold RDT to. I was excited to see him and ask about life, how the family was doing, adult things. Where the hell is RDT? The answer? 
on his couch, since Sporting never played him. Maybe the fans that called him a fraud were right? That one tidbit was probably more interesting than the entire group, as we eased through it with a rotated squad. Meaning, we finally skipped the round of 32, since first place teams don't have to participate in that stage. So, in the round of 16, we drew Anderlecht, and the job was done in the first leg. Eight teams left, and the draw for the quarterfinals gave us Juventus. Before we get to that, the La Liga form was absolute flames. Malaga? Let's get a Labiad brace. Sevilla? It's close turn for a brace. But Falco Madrid at the Wanda? Maybe the craziest match of the season. You wouldn't believe it from the first half. However, after exchanging goals, let's tune into the last 10 minutes. Whip in! Come on! How are we letting Richie score a header there? Oh my, we've made all three subs. No, no, we're gonna make you a false nine. But we do have a highlight off the rip. Attacking for the last little bit. Corner kick. Malero is gonna whip it in. Let's go! Yosef Shutalo. We're, we're going for the win. We're going for the dub. Highlight. This could be costly, but it could be the best decision I've made today. Still has, we still have a Malero. Caceres. Alenia. Pass across. Let's go! Oh, yeah, make it double. Why not? We beat Atletico Madrid twice, 3-2. Let's go. The following six matches were all undefeated with four wins and two draws, which is good. But the draw with Granada was last minute pain, and Levante made me want to throw my PC out the window. Being real, Real Madrid were just overpowered. Our top four place was looking likely. All we needed to overcome was the toughest stretch of the campaign. Spoiler, Sociedad was dealt with comfortably despite a rotated side. So let's see if we can overcome Juventus. A match with either Jovic or Arezzo was awaiting us, and getting a successful 1-0 victory in leg one had me feeling great. I could argue that more was deserved, but we moved. Juventus supposedly didn't have a manager, and we learned post-match that the coach in charge of first team activities was the goalkeeping coach. Sadly, he ain't clueless, as he learned his mistakes of playing McKenny on the wing and put him straight into midfield resulting with Sar scoring early in leg two. We were creating shots, but many were outside of the box. While threatening, you aren't going to win the tie if you keep spamming attempts from distance. Work the ball into the box was applied, and both sides were trading chances. Thankfully, it was us who scored those, regaining our one goal aggregate lead. Of course, Juventus were dangerous, but I felt good about seeing the game out. The fullback performances were my only concern, so I subbed one of them off. Sar, he still- Oh no! Richards gets sent off! With 15 to go, not like this. Can anyone play left back? No, just hope we can hold off. Corner kick. Cleared away for now. <sighs> oh no. Oh. Is this game taking the piss? Thankfully. Those bozos from Turin lost the final to Inter, but man, I felt like such a big missed opportunity. Despite my head being hot, we had Barcelona right after, and I made sure to train my defensive corners and free kicks, as Barcelona seemed to always be a threat off those. Okay, free kick Barcelona, we practiced defending set pieces, which didn't work. All right, oh no, come on, we practiced defending set pieces. Ooh. Real Madrid were on their way to win La Liga, and while that was cool for them, I wanted to win. Penalties were scored by both sides in the span of 10 minutes. But I thought, why not bring out the 4 triple 2 Okay, I'm calm. Labiad's one on one. No one in sight. Labiad. Let's go. I didn't even have a reaction during this section because I knew it was coming. In spite of that, Real Madrid would go on a poor run of form, which had them knocked out of the Champions League and lose back-to-back -back La Liga matches to Bilbao and Sevilla. Meanwhile, we won our two matches, which brought the gap down to six points with three matches left. Real Madrid had a Falco Madrid next, and if they lost, we could go three points within them. They won and confirmed themselves as La Liga winners. It's a false hope that kills you.